good morning, everybody. Uh, today we're uh, going to continue our look at, at motivation. And uh, just to kind of bring us up to speed again, uh, we had started with our, our basic model. And uh, what we have looked at, first of all, are, are some of the internal uh, kind of mechanistic uh, motives. Uh, we talked about uh, instincts. And needs as originating within the individual themselves and therefore kind of pushing behavior um, out from that person. Um, and, and then I also kind of glanced over, didn't really specify. Um, also, of course, we have our outcomes that have certain incentive value, presumably valued, desirable kinds of outcomes that we're willing to engage in behavior to achieve those outcomes or consequences. And so they've got an incentive value that kind of draws our behavior out. The famous dangling carrot in front of the horse. So the horse will follow it or move. Um, and then uh, we looked at Maslow's hierarchy of needs related to this, um, largely trashing that um, kind of a theory. Um, before moving on to Henry Murray's expectancy needs, uh, pardon me, expectancy value theory. Um, and uh, with uh, Henry Murray's, remember that we had um, incentive value of our outcomes was the V in the expectancy times value uh, formulation. And uh, Murray identified our outcome expectations uh, meaning the expectation that certain behaviors will lead to specific kinds of outcomes. And then uh, we had just gotten to the point of talking about Albert Bandura and self-efficacy theory. And uh, Bandura sort of comes along now and says, hey, pretty good model, I like the way things are working, uh, but there is another set of expectations here or expectancies that you have overlooked or that also play a role. And as you'll recall, um, we call these our efficacy expectations. That's where we were when uh, we left last class, um, up to talking about efficacy expectation. Basically synonymous with the notion of confidence. Um, feeling efficacious means that I feel I can be effective, um, that I can make the uh, or control my behaviors to produce a certain outcome. Now, in order to have high efficacy expectations, the individual has to possess two related kinds of beliefs, our efficacy beliefs, um, as Bandura calls them. First of all, I have to believe that I possess the requisite behaviors that can produce that outcome. So for me to, for example, to go into a figure skating competition with confidence, first of all, it's mandatory that I must trust and believe that I possess the various kinds of figure skating skills that will allow me to execute those behaviors and therefore perform well in the skating competition. Obviously, if I don't believe I can skate, then I'm going to go into a figure skating competition. I mean, I'm in trouble. I'm not going to have much confidence at all. But even if I do believe that I've got the necessary behaviors, I can do this, maybe even I've done it before, does not necessarily mean that I will have confidence or high self-efficacy. Because it's also going to be dependent on a second 
kind of belief that I can execute in this particular environment, in this particular situation. So the classic case, I'm using the figure skater again, a classic case of somebody you know, who is practicing for the Olympics. I could go out on the ice, uh, triple lutz, double south cow, perfect landings, quads this, triples this, doubles this, bang, 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 perfect routine. But now that figure skater comes to a different environment, the Olympic situation and circumstance, and suddenly begins to lose confidence. So it's not just enough to know that I've got the requisite behavior, I must also have the confidence or belief that I'm going to be able to do it in this particular situation or circumstance. Um, you could take uh, you know, academic performance. You may study and study and study, do practice quizzes, do practice quizzes, feel fairly confident that you have acquired the knowledge that is going to allow you to perform well um, for this exam. You feel prepared. You've got all the knowledge. You, you, you trust that. But lo and behold, come exam time, you may start to feel that confidence slipping away because all of a sudden you're beginning to doubt whether or not you're going to be able to actually do it when it counts on the exam. So in order to have a high self-efficacy, we've got to have these two kinds of related beliefs. First of all, I as a person, I do possess the requisite behaviors that would subsequently lead to these outcomes. And then I secondly must also believe that in executing these behaviors, I can interact effectively with this environment under these conditions, these circumstances, this particular scenario. I am going to be able to do it. Then my, um, ep my efficacy expectations will then be fairly high. You know, approaching one, which is very high confidence. Now, what this really adds to the model is an ability to understand why people may start to make some different kinds of choices may actually um, start making some differences in terms of their persistence. And so um, when we had talked about the various alternatives related to outcome expectations and incentive value, um, how uh, people, you know, that, I mean, if we just do that calculus, we can kind of predict that somebody, you know, will, will engage in this kind of an activity or take that alternative. Uh, but yet what we find when it actually gets down to it, um, sometimes people will surprise us by not doing things that seem right. And one of the big reasons is confidence. And so even though uh, somebody, um, I'm kind of trying to remember the examples I used on, on, on Monday, I can't quite recall uh, what examples I used for expectancy value. Um, but if, if all of that calculus loads up in, in favor of, let's say, a person taking um, you know, a, a course in genetics um, because it's got high incentive value for them. Um, they expect that if they do the behaviors, there's a, a decent outcome expectation for getting a, a grade or a course in genetics. However, uh, this individual may feel that, you know, geez, when it comes to the hard sciences and biology, I'm not very confident in myself. And so despite you know, that original Henry Murray kind of calculation, he may find this person instead takes a course in creative lunch bagging um, because they feel more confident in that domain than they do in the biology. 